drive, if you want to save it on your, what, six and a half inch floppy. If you want to save it on your reel-to-reel -reel, uh, hard you wanna, drive. You want to get it on, a, on a, your wrist oh, wow. in, in terms of a tattoo. Yeah. Now, what's nice about this G-Code, that 3D printer runs on G-Code. The laser cutter that I just found out today that the, the library just bought, they have a nice, they have a $17,000 laser cutter sitting down. Ooh. Yeah, they I'm just, just, the they just oh, use hey. for free. It's yeah. wonderful. Um, you can take your G-Code profile and just throw it on there. Oh my You'll have goodness. to change your toolpath, all right, to because you've got to understand how the machine works. Now, CNC routers are the easiest, in my opinion, to understand because you have a tool and it is moving it in space and plowing into things. The laser cutter, I'd have to work with it to see how it programs. They bought it and they don't even know how to program it. Yet, so. Can we work on that? Uh, I, I've talked to them today about it. Uh, maybe. I have some projects I could use it. I didn't realize they had it. They have a uh, laser cutter at Tiny Circuits now. Ooh, how big is it? It's like that big. The one they have at the library is 18 inch by 24 inch. It's a monster. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what wattage is, so I don't know what it, what it will cut. But that is to get our basic tool path. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm, we're going to go through, and I'm just going to go file, new. Yeah. Guys, hmm. file, new. If you want to save that, because you have, we saved the G code file just now, if you guys decided to or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to ask you to save the, the Aspire file. If you want to save that Aspire file to go back to it later, you can. It doesn't matter. Uh, once you guys get good at this, you can make this in about 30 seconds. It's super quick to blast through it once everything's set up and you're familiar with it. Yeah. And sorry, Tim, you're just kind of sitting there watching. Um, but I'm going to go to File New. Do I want to save it? No, I don't. I don't care about that file. It's going to ask me my new job setup. I'm going to tell it 12 inches by 12 inches. Everything should be set from the last time you set it. So I just click OK. All right, now let's import a logo. So I want everybody, uh, is everybody online? Yes. Oh, yeah. yep. Yep. All right, um, we did a Corvette logo earlier. What's a, 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 de a decent logo that's pretty basic? Set, uh, we use a Synap SVG. No, it's, it's too small. Oh, super. I tried it, it, it doesn't affect Chevy the right. Chevy Ford, I suppose. All right, let's do Chevy. Chevy looks nice. So open up your okay. Internet Explorer, <laughs> Firefox, Netscape, uh, Safari, whatever, and then links. type in Chevy logo. Oh, All right. Okay. And in Google search, click images. All right. And across the top, it says web images, shopping, videos, news, more. And then it says search tools. Click that search tools button. You already have it open. Cool. All right. And then I click size. Now have it large. And then I click color, black and white. That gives you the most simplistic files to cut. And I'm just going to take that first one. It's, a, it's got the Chevy symbol, says Chevrolet. All right. I'm going to just uh, click view image. Uh, it's OK. Let me see if I can find a better one. The second image is a little sharper. The edges were fuzzy on that first one. So the second image, if you want to get the second image, you got that first one. I just right click save it as. I'm going to drop it in my CNC grabber folder. Save it anywhere on your PC you want, as long as you know where it's at. You want to the second it. one, I'm going to scroll up to the top. Click search tools. Uh -huh. uh, click size large. And then click color black and white. What, what kind of file do we need this in? Um, JPEG, bitmap. JPEG, bitmap, PNG. It's you'll have some sometime you'll have weird errors. You'll have a, a, a JPEG file. No SVG. You can, but Bing? it has problems. Yes. All right. It's supposed to be, but sometimes it has problems. Okay. Remember, this program's from 2009, so some of the new uh, Unicode protocols aren't updated in it. All right. I have this saved on my uh, in my CNC router folder, so I can just close this. I'm just going to minimize it. This, this one. Yeah, save it to your PC. Your PC. PNG, save it wherever you want. Yeah. Well, you can I, go online to an online image converter and right. convert the file to whatever you want. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> um, if you have problems, let me check it real quick. But if you have problems, um, if you save it from the Google preview, sometimes that helps too. Instead of like actually opening up the source page, mm -hmm. it, when you click on it and it blows up the image on Google, just right click save. Right. File. Uh, and back in, in Aspire, and then import, and then import bitmap. 
and then find it. Yeah. Everything's grayed out on import. Um, hit OK first. See down there at the bottom? You haven't oh. selected your material yet. Yeah, yeah. There now you can now go to the file import right there. So I have the same problem. Like, Find your file and open it, and there it is. All right. Now this is just an image file. Right. And as soon as everybody gets there, we got a JPEG that looks fine, right? Yeah, yeah. It opened in mine. Should open in all your guys's. Mine looks a little distorted because I'm zoomed out, but as I zoom in, it looks fine. Oh, I can do this. This is probably what most of you guys will be doing the most if you're putting logos and stuff on things or making cool signs. Uh, or you want to do a, an intricate inlay. There it goes. Alright. Everyone got it imported? Not yet. You can go through this later. Uh, you have the, the programs on your PCs. You can click help and go through the help stuff later at your own leisure where it goes through this whole process. But it's a British guy and he's really slow. <laughs> I put in downloads. How you put them out? Saturday um, at my house, we're having a barbecue. Oh, no, no, no. And how long do you want to show up? I'll be short. Oh, it's, it starts at 5. You keep going out. Oh, I'll be in Cleveland I'll until 4. So. I'll, I'll be uh, coming back. Okay. So <coughs> yeah, I'll be getting <coughs> home like a half hour before people show up. Oh, okay. That's okay. The details. Did I go? Did I have any details? Saturday? My house, I'll give you some. There you go. Just kind of a barbecue housewarming thing. Okay. That's not where it shot. 5 p.m. So pay. go to here. If you want to bring something, you can. I'm just going to be like grilling hot dogs and hamburgers. I have some Some beer, right? but if you want okay. something special for me. Okay, here it is. 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 You know what? I'll, I'll, go, <laughs> to, I'll, go, to, uh, I'll go to Spice Rack and I'll get some of those. Um, those things just for you. I'll visit you guys, you know. Probably yeah, because like yeah, you got to drive so far to get to my new house. No. <laughs> he lives less, you're like a mile and a quarter away. Like I could, throw, I, could, uh, I, could, I could slingshot rocks to his house. Yeah, trebuchet. Yeah, I could trebuchet yeah, his yeah, back there. Uh, yeah, just wrap notes around it with rubber bands. Yeah. Caterpillars. I, I don't think Coventry Township would like that too much. Yeah. Is this my water? Yeah. Okay. If you want to show up too, I'll give you my address and just show up. Uh, I've got to work Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks, Leo. Oh, it's all oh, no. The house. Oh, okay. A lot of work getting it. Well, they bought it, the landlord bought it in December and rehabbed it, but it's oh. never been lived in. So oh, there's all the little tiny things right. that no one thinks about, like Which means they're looking for you know these curtain hanging hangers. No, no it's not. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, JPEG there's no blinds bolted. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no blind hangers bolted. Oh, they they the stuff that's usually there. They, they, they did a, okay. that, an entire Files skin coat across the lawns. Fresh carpets, fresh floors, fresh paint. Changed every single outlet, base plate, switch in the entire house. The only thing they didn't paint is the basement because it's wood panel. Um, but they did put fresh linoleum on all of the floors. But it's like you're go I'm going through, so and I'm seeing okay, when, okay. when the, the guys came in and they muddled you, the walls, you the you didn't didn't wall that. You said where you they went a little too close to the and socket. And, and, and now, yeah. when I have to do something to the socket, I have to like chisel off the drywall. Well, I mean, not randomly. So, and then I had to put tables in the basement, so I didn't have enough. I built tables. I built workbenches in the basement because there's like. There's a, a room probably uh, ten foot wide, so it's about from the wall <laughs> to the edge of the hexagons. And it's about that for you. Yeah. From the wall to oh, maybe Andy. Maybe and yeah. about that long. For, um, and it's just all workbenches. Just, just don't put me in that creepy shower you found. Oh the creepy murder shower? Oh my god. I I pulled that back up. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I gotta I gotta seal that. It leaks a little bit when it rains. Cause when it's sealed, I'm gonna paint that and I'm gonna put a shelving unit in there. Because there's there's a there's like a cutout in the basement wall and there's a shower there. But when I moved in, there's a painted board over top of it that blended into the wall. And I was sitting there the one day and we had a real hard rain here a couple months ago. Yeah, it was like when we had tornadoes touch down and everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was raining horizontally into the face of my house. I was getting water in the basement. And had water coming out the end of this board. And I was like, so I looked at it and I'm like, oh, there's screws everywhere. Okay, cool. So I ended up the screw and I opened it up and it is like, everything else is fresh coat of paint and this is like, Hot, it's that uh, 1957 pink and blue. Ooh, 
Yeah, yeah and there's four inches of water in the bottom of the shower stall, oh. and there's just the biggest, nastiest, bloated dead spiders floating into it. Oh. Yeah. So, and the fixtures had all been ripped off the walls, and parts of the walls were out, and they had put poured concrete <sighs> into the the drain to finish it. And, uh. All right. Anyway. We have our Chevy logo. You can zoom in if you want. Zoom out. I zoom in to where it's about the size of the screen to help me out. I'm going to select it, just clicking on it. All right, you'll get little four little dots in the corners. All right. And then uh, over where it says create vectors, the last tool on the bottom row is a little bird. It says fit vectors to bitmap. I'm going to click that. All right. Your slider, uh, first you, you select color, black and white. I always just select color. Um, and this is number of colors slash threshold. I always just flip that to 16. So what that does is it lets you determine you have some, you might have some fading and you don't want that to turn the fading into a vector. You want to cut that off. So you want to select which colors you want it to turn to a vector. And then it'll have a bunch of different shades and then it says trace color. I set my trace color to red because it shows up really nice. Unless my image is red, then it doesn't show up. So just select whatever color you like. Uh, that or fluorescent green seem to work really well. And then start selecting shade, and it'll start vectoring stuff. So if you select solid black, and you zoom in, you'll notice it doesn't quite do it perfect. So I'm going to select more until it starts getting nice and perfect, and these little black lines start fading away. What do we press them to get it to turn red? Select those black boxes. Yeah, those different shaded boxes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, start clicking on those. So uh, that's what it's selected. I'm probably going to click all shades. of them, see, except the last one, because the last one's white. On mine, oh. mine has color, and all of the colors that are in the image uh -huh. are represented here. I'm going to so click all but the last three. You, want. you just have black and white, so all you have is like If you guys don't want to click all of the last three, it's fine. Yeah. What if you drop it down to... Then you have less, <laughs> less so ability to fine-tune so which ones you want vectorized. So I can choose this one, I'll choose that okay. blue part. So the more it gives you... Yeah, because JPEGs are never a true color. color They're all, well, even even if it was like, saved as a pure black color, bit, so it'll always distort one, it to save on memory. And that one probably. Yeah, Alright, so now if you have a high-definition file, like a .tiff, um, if you click black, it'll save it down perfectly. So I'm just going to take that outline, that works perfect. Pick up all but the last... Yeah, yeah, last couple. What you want I did all but the last three. The last one's white, so if you click it, it just selects like the whole damn thing. Boom. Yeah. Like so that. don't select that yeah, one. Yeah, select the white box then. Okay. All right. Mm, maybe and the one next to it. See it's it looks good enough. enough. Remember, this logo you're, you're on our right. page, this is 12 by 12, okay, and it's only a couple right. inches. When we yeah, go to cut better. this, you'll never notice the little yeah, bit of that'd be fine there. So even if it doesn't look perfect, 90% of the time will Because of the dithering right. in the image, mm -hmm. how I have the shading, you want to make sure you choose all the black, not just one black. Oh, okay. you, as much as you want, really. As much detail as you want. Yeah, what he's got selected just here. Just make sure... The last four seem to work pretty good. Things that have fine detail, mm -hmm. you want to select less because it'll, it'll start smudging things together. Oh, okay. And anything that is colored red or whatever your trace color is will turn into a vector. All right. Now, under that, it'll say corner fit. Um, this depends on how good your vector is. Um, if you have a vector that's really jagged and you want the edges to smooth out a little bit, you can turn your corner fit down to loose. And it'll kind of round all the corners. And if you've got two things that are a 90 degree, it'll put a little radius in there. Um, this is a pretty simple thing. Uh, I'm going to go 100% tight fit. All right, and then down below that you have noise filter, and what that means is, say you got like a, a fancy design that's got mist or something on it, like little black dots everywhere, and they're like one pixel in size. You just tell it one anything above one pixel, and it'll ignore all those when it goes to turn into a vector. All right, uh, you know what a pixel is. Okay. What's the default corner fit? It's a new movie. Uh, default is 82%. For some oh, oh, so you can I, set it back to default. Yeah, just set it back to default. Does it show you what you've done when, like, if I put it to loose, will it? Actually, you'll see it in a second if you want to. That's your call. I go to tight on most things. Um, you have to play around with that depending but on. I mean, can you do this and then see how it'll do, or do you have to start all over again? Oh no, you just you just hit uh, either Control Z or go up to Edit and click back, because it'll it'll generate the. Uh... So you have to hit Fit Vectors for that effect to take in. Yeah, and you click Fit Vectors, and oh, as you okay. scroll in, yeah, Hit Fit Vectors. It's not. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close. All right. And then I close that window. 
I'll click on the shaded part and click delete to get rid of my image, and I have my vectors left. So, so yeah, Mike, you gotta, you've got to close out of that. Do we fit, fit vectors? Or after, yeah, watch, after you watch. fit vectors, yeah, fit so vectors. You can. You can you can move this around, close that yeah, up, and then it cool. changes. Click the gray portion, back, the old image, and, and hit the change. delete delete key. So you keep hitting deleting the JPEG. Vectors, yeah, you're oh, deleting the JPEG. Oh, okay. And you just have the. the now you have the vector. Now you're ready to cut. Ah. All right. Now I show you V carving. This is by far my most used toolpath, and it's wonderful and it's super simple setup. All right. Now, one thing you'll notice, if you click on any line, it only selects that line. I want, to, I want to treat this as one whole drawing, so if I click on it, I want to be able to drag the whole drawing. So I'm just going to drag and highlight, Hit close when you're done. copy the whole thing, select the whole thing, just click and drag around it, it makes a box. You want to select the whole thing with a box, you know, just like this, Tim, click, drag, bam. You could hold shift and click each individual thing, but this is a lot quicker. All right. As long as the whole thing's highlighted and then that pink dash lines. I don't think my uh, stuff took a Oh. Click the black, black portion. Now click your delete key. All right. Now zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There it is. Um, <laughs> yes. You have a zoom key. Right? Yeah. There you go. Switch the tool. Uh, Zoom it there. Oh, that's really tiny. Yeah. Well, just highlight the whole thing. So just click and drag over top of it. Just make up. It doesn't matter. Over the vector is what we care about. It doesn't have to be perfectly over the square. All right. Yeah, batteries or no. now under the edit vectors menu. Mm -hmm. Wait for Shanahan to get rid of the drive. Stop throwing. It's thrown out of the way. All right. <laughs> under the edit one. vectors menu. Okay. The edit vectors menu. There is a group tool. It is the fourth one in on the top. It says group selected vectors. See that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Click it. Bam, that's now one image. Now you can grab it anywhere you want. Oh, I should probably select and, something first. Yeah, you have to select something that's first. Thing. <laughs> and now you can drag it around at your leisure. You can spin it, you can flip it, you can rotate it, and it, it does the whole thing. You can scale it, it does the whole thing. All right? I'm going to zoom right. out. Sorry. And you'll notice that most of the time your vectors are super tiny. So Mike's already done it. You can either drag it to rescale it if you want the quick and dirty way, uh, which is fine for what we're doing right now. Just click one of the boxes in the corner and just drag it. I have a question. One in the corner, not one on the top or side. It's not selecting it like you're selecting Double click it. Yeah, double click the vectors to give you the boxes in the corners. All right, or you could do what I told you earlier, which is scale selected vectors and tell it the precise size you want it. All right, I do that a lot too if I have two components next to each other and I want them to be spaced a certain amount apart. All right, is so the scaling it. Oh, is that yeah, I'll do okay? that. Yeah, I'm going to tell it I want this to be 10 inches wide. Yeah. All right. I don't care what you guys size want it, as long as when you zoom out, you can actually see it. Because it'll look like crap on your render if you don't. Edit vectors. <clears throat> yeah, oh, scale. scale. All right, scale. I, was up in edit. I just told it 10 inches because I have a 12 inch board. And if it's not centered on your board, go over to Align Objects and click Center Material, and it'll move it. So you want like 10 by 10 for the height and width? Don't change the the one. Just change. Because what? What's going to happen is if you change it 10 by 10, it'll distort it. It'll actually make it 10 wide, but okay. it'll stretch See it. See the check so mark? It says link X, X, Y. Mm -hmm. Leave that clicked. Just change one of them. So if you want the height to be a certain thing or you want the, the length to be a certain thing, whichever one you care about. I would say since this is wider, you care about the width. Mm -hmm. So make it 10 inches. That'll give you an inch gap on each side for your clamps to see. If you, the width. If you leave them yeah. linked, so you just change one. Yeah, and it'll it'll keep it from distorting when it changes the size. But if you wanted to fit it like okay. onto a t-shirt or, or onto a specific board, you could unlink them and then just say make it this tall and this wide. But it would distort your image. If right, you it would that. warp yeah. it to fit the shape you wanted. Yeah. And we're centering. All right. Click close. All right. And then down here in a line, click that first top one. It centers it in the material. Okay. All right. 
And I, I usually center all my jobs because it gives me plenty of real estate to put plants. All right. If you guys are at that point, anyone not there? Mike? I'm there. All right. Uh, I can open back up my tool paths. I have my vector selected. And we're going to click the fancy Create V Carve Engraving Toolpath button. This is my favorite button in the entire program. Vector selected. Create V Carve. Create V Carve. All right. Second one. Between you and me. That's not what we, we did pocket before, right? Yeah, we're doing a we're doing a V card now. Okay. This is my most used favorite button. All right, start depth will be zero because we're starting at the top of the board. Flat depth, that is basically uh, the deepest it will cut. Um, if you have a vector that's got two lines that are two inches apart, it's going to try to plow the tool to to take those to two forty fives down to a point. So you give it the maximum depth that goes before it just makes the bottom flat. Um, an example would be on this sign that I carve, I give it a flat depth of 0.2. So I have a 45 on the side and it's 0.2 inches down to the bottom of the S. All right, and then it makes a flat bottom. All right. That is? Flat depth. Flat depth? Oh, yeah. All right. So if you want to take a look at it a little bit better. And that depends on, you won't see that unless it's a wide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like up here where this is, fun, this is fine, it doesn't get anywhere near the depth. Right there. Yeah, right here you can see it the best. Okay. Cool. Convenient. Is that appropriate? 